Oh, hey, with any luck, uh, my screen should be showing. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, so my name is Timothy Jacobs. I am a WordPress developer. Ooh, let me try something. Hold on. I'm going to stop joining this, and I'm going to share it again. Um, but yeah, my name is Timothy Jacobs. I am a WordPress developer at iThemes. Um, today, what I'm going to go through with you is a somewhat overview of the changes that happened in WordPress 5.4. Uh, WordPress 5.4 is slated for release uh, at the end of this month. So on March 31st, WordPress.4 should be, 5.4, excuse me, should be available in your dashboard for downloading. Um, and we're gonna give you a quick preview based on what uh, WordPress 5.4 is looking like uh, in the latest development version. Um, let's share this again. And bring this back up again. But yeah, so the first thing they wanted to show you is how you can get a copy of WordPress 5.4. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so WordPress, right now we're on WordPress 5.3. Um, but what I would highly recommend doing, we're at the point of what's called RC3. Um, and that stands for Release Candidate 3. Um, in a couple of weeks, we'll be releasing it for real. Um, so what that means is that now is the perfect time um, it has been the perfect time for a couple of weeks, actually, uh, to test out WordPress 5.4 on your own sites. What I would highly recommend is not doing this on your actual live site, but almost every single hosting provider these days, they give you something called a staging site or development site or a testing site. And what you can do is you can go over to plugins. So you should set up your staging site, however you do it for your provider. Uh, go into add new and search for WordPress beta testing. And that's gonna give you the WordPress beta tester plugin. Uh, you'll see something that says install now, and you'll get a new page in your settings menu. If you go to tools and beta testing, you'll see a page that looks like this. And so what I'd recommend is checking the beta slash RC. And so what this does is this gives you the most stable versions of the development previews of what's coming up in WordPress. And you just hit save changes and you can go over to dashboard updates. And then you can update uh, with just hitting the update now button and you'll get the latest version of WordPress uh, that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. Something that is really cool with this that has changed is WordPress beta testing will also now give you uh, this cool widget over here. And this is essentially a snapshot of the blog posts that are on wordpress.org. And so you can click any one of these to see the features. You can click here to see all the commits um, and you can learn what's in this release. So now into actual WordPress 5.4 stuff. Uh, the majority of this, like almost all past releases in WordPress is Gutenberg related, uh, but I'm gonna focus on a couple of things first and then we'll dive into Gutenberg. Uh, the first thing is a continuation to site health. So we have this new a uh, dashboard widget here called Site Health Status. And what it's essentially doing is just giving a really quick preview of what the site health is for my site. So it's saying, hey, I my score here, if you can kind of see that, it's a little bit yellow and it's grayed out there. And it's showing that, hey, I have some things that I should be, be improving on my site. And it's telling me my site has critical issues, that should be addressed soon. And take a look at the four items in the Site Health screen. And it links me over to the actual site health page. And here I can see all the details. But so this is a really neat thing. So if something changes on your site, you'll see it right here. You don't need to be, oh, well, <laughs> am I going to constantly look at this site health page and go back to it and check on it every day? Uh, but now it's available for you to see right there on your dashboard immediately. Uh, one, I guess, <laughs> the sole other change that I'm going to talk about um, in WordPress 5.4 that isn't Gutenberg stuff um, is some changes that have been made to favicons. Um, and essentially what it means is that it's gonna be a lot easier for plugins uh, to serve up favicons. So I believe if you're using Yoast SEO, for instance, what their plan is, is that if you're using the, um, where is it, uh, site logo, but your theme doesn't have the icon or something like that, they're going to automatically include the favicon and generate it for you. 
Um, that used to be a thing that plugins couldn't really do uh, for a number of weird reasons. But that's uh, underlying technical change in WordPress 5.4 that should hopefully uh, bring some cool things for plugins and things like that. So without further ado, we're going to dive into all the Gutenberg stuff for WordPress 5.4. So I'm going to create a new post. And almost immediately, you'll probably notice something radically different. Uh, by default, in WordPress 5.4, uh, any new, uh, what should be any new install, but in practice will be almost every install, is Gutenberg will now be in full screen mode by default. Um, and one thing that's changed here um, is that you used to see, if you're in full screen mode, a back icon up here. Um, and instead, that's been replaced by a WordPress logo. So if you want to get back, you just click that icon and you get back to the post listing or wherever you're at the page is listing, so on and so forth. If you don't like full screen mode, um, a lot of people really like full screen mode. It hides all the distractions, means that you're just focusing on your content, but you can get back to it by going up to the three dots in the top right hand corner of your screen and you just turn on, turn on or turn off full screen mode. And now we have everything back. I'm going to keep it on though. I kind of like it. Um, it's a lot better for demoing stuff. Uh, we get to hide some things away. Another thing that you might notice is a new welcome guide. So there used to be in Gutenberg a series of little boxes that would appear on your screen and they would go into different places. And they were trying to say, oh, this is how the block editor works. You click here, you click that. Um, but a lot of people found they weren't very effective. So what the Gutenberg team has built is a whole new welcome guide uh, to using Gutenberg. And you'll see this on new installs um, for once you click it away, it won't be there anymore. But if you want to get back to it, you can do what I just did and open up that menu again and go into welcome guide. And you can see it just says like, welcome to the block editor. And it tries to give you some text that gives you some basic ideas about how the block editor works. And there also is a link off to some documentation wordpress.org. So let's give our post a title. And let's take a look at uh, the first new block that was introduced in WordPress 5.4, which is the social icons block. And so what this does is this gives you an easy way to get a menu on your site that has links to all of your different social media profiles, websites, things like that. You edit it by just clicking on any of these logos and you just enter in the URL of whatever Facebook page you want to display or the Twitter page that you want to display, any of those things. You can also give it a different label. So if for some reason you don't like the word Twitter, you could change it there. And any of the icons that you don't provide a URL for, they'll be hidden. But when you just go into edit mode, you get them all back here. This is in a little bit of a weird alignment. I wonder why that is. Hmm. Let's publish this page and try refreshing. Hmm, that's weird. No, let me enable top toolbar. I think that should make that slightly, yeah, slightly better. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that's the social links or social navigation or social icons block. Um, it's a pretty neat way to go about it um, for just making it a quick and easy way to uh, see all your social media links. I'm going to go and show you a preview of what this looks on the front end. You see, it's pretty much exactly what we had in the back end, just a list of icons. And if I hit any of those, I'd go off to the Twitter feed, the Facebook, et cetera. The next block that I want to talk about is the buttons block. And so the buttons block is a continuation of the button block. And what it basically allows us to do is to create multiple buttons in a group. So a lot of times you might have like different call to actions, like maybe uh, download now and sign up for my list. And you want to have them all be grouped together, shared on the same line. Previously, you might have tried to do something like that with a columns block and have a button that's in each column and try and make it all work. But WordPress 5.4 adds a dedicated buttons block that takes care of all of that for you. And each button here can be configured individually. So you can see, okay, let's make this button have a black background and use this grayish white text. 
And there's even a different style variation for this block. I can change it to the outline form of the button. Um, let's set the default for new ones to be outlines too. Um, and so you can see we can add different buttons and just keep going, keep on going. Anything like that. Yeah, so it's just a simple way of organizing buttons. We can do some basic alignment things like aligning center, aligning left and aligning right but you can't do like more advanced patterns. So like if you wanted to set up things where you have like two buttons in the left hand and two buttons in the right hand or a button here and a button there, you can't do that. This is just a much more basic version of the buttons block, but you still have the columns block to do your more advanced layouts. Speaking of the columns block, one of the things that we have gotten is some really cool new color utilities. So previously, let me grab some text here so previously when you were uh, using column blocks if you wanted to make changes to different uh, things across all columns like for instance the text color you would have to go column by column and change the color settings for that individual block. But something that's really cool about the new version of Gutenberg is that you can apply changes to all of them um, at the same time. One of the things that I want to note here uh, that's another cool new feature is there's another form of the block navigation now. So it shows in the bottom left hand corner and I can go up to my column block and then I can go up to my columns block by kicking there. But you'll see we now have a new color settings uh, panel and I can change the text color and it applies the changes to all of the columns. Um, I can do the changes here, whatever I want to do. And I can still though, if I wanted to, uh, go into an, Ooh, that's totally unreadable. Uh, go into an individual column and still change the color, uh, for that block itself. So I have it set globally by default to make all new columns have black text. That's a, probably a terrible example, um, but any settings that are made to the individual blocks themselves, they stay. So it just provides an easy way to make changes to everything, but you still have the power to make changes on an individual basis as well. And so we got that functioning as well in the group block. So previously the group block was pretty limited. It let you uh, set up, um, a group of different blocks and group them together and you can move them all as one and you could change alignment. Um, but now you can also in your group block uh, apply text colors. And it's just the same thing. Oh. Is this not in the group? No, that's not in the group. Let me make sure we get this in the group. But yeah, so there we go. So we have my first paragraph block or my first paragraph block, and my second paragraph block, they're all in the same group. And the text color that I applied to the group applies to all of the blocks inside of that group. So a big new feature uh, that is kind of a bit retro um, is gradients. You can now use gradients pretty much everywhere uh, in Gutenberg that you could select a background color, you can select a gradient. So this is the cover block. And it's often used for like making it the cover of your post, your page, a section, a pretty version um, of a heading, something like that. And what you see now is we have solid backgrounds by default, but I can click on over to gradient and Gutenberg comes with a set of preset gradients that I can choose from just by doing that. We can also change the type of gradient. So we can, right now, this is just a linear gradient that goes up and down in any angle that I want. But you can also change it to a radial gradient where the color comes from the inside and comes out. Um, and it's kind of like some kind of old school internet stuff. If you want to adjust these, whoops. If you want to adjust these, you can create new color stops. So for instance, if we want to have a blue here and then create a shift to green, this is horribly ugly. Um, and change this purple over to an orange. Maybe that's slightly better. Uh, you can do that. You can create as many stops as you want. 
You can see like the I think this is called Jazz something or other. Should get a label. Cool to warm spectrum is the name for it. I think there's a cooler name for it that's somewhere. Um, but yeah, you can see this one has a whole bunch of different color stops for it. Um, I'm gonna change it all like that. These gradient options also apply to button blocks. So we can see for, uh, let's say we wanna change this download now button and we wanna give it a gradient, we can do that. That's very unreadable, that's a bit better. Um, it still shows for the kind of outline style, but it, it looks really weird. Um, but maybe that's a style you like uh, if you're, <laughs> Probably a much better desire than I. I am merely a developer. You can find a good use for it. Um, but yeah, you can apply your button gradients to pretty much everything. I don't believe, yeah, they're not available for all colors. Like I think uh, the Gutenberg team correctly made the decision that trying to use a gradient as the background for large amounts of text would lead to a horribly unreadable site. Um, so as much as possible, they try and say, okay, you can do this, but let's not give you too many tools to go crazy. Um, but yeah, that's the gradient feature in WordPress 5.4. Uh, as I mentioned, Gutenberg is going to come with a number of preset gradients. Uh, but if you're a theme developer, you can provide your own gradients that come preset with your theme that might try and work a bit better to your styles. Or if you're someone who's looking at this like, oh, oh my God, I do not want my clients to be suddenly putting gradients all over their website and pretending like this is horrible. Uh, there is a way that you can remove this support as well. Uh, there's an like add theme support, disable custom gradients. It's something along those lines. And that'll disable the gradients from the UI. So your clients won't design a horribly looking website. Alongside uh, the color stuff, we have another cool feature where we can now apply text color changes to individual characters or to individual words. So we can see here, I've selected, let's say view in view post. And I can go up here to what is my called my like inline formatting menu. And we see things like bold or italics. But if you click this little disclosure icon, it'll show you some more rich text controls. And a new one is text color. So we can say, OK, let's change this text specifically to black. And it'll show me that the black text is selected. And now my button has both black text, black text, excuse me, and white text. And you can do that pretty much anywhere. Uh, that inline controls are allowed. So we can change in the middle of this to be black or change this word to be red. You can also use a custom color here and it'll pop up the color uh, picker for you. Yeah. Let's hit another update again. Uh, another change that has happened is trying to make it consistent between all the different Gutenberg blocks that interact with media. So one of the things that you can do with a cover block, for instance, is you can set the uh, background as a picture instead of it being a solid color. And so the way you do that now for all blocks is by looking for something that says replace. And so when I click replace, I can either upload a new file or I can open something from the media library and I can just use that. So if I wanted to use this as the cover block background, that's how I'd go about it. And you can see now that it's figured out, okay, I'm gonna still keep the existing uh, gradient, but now it's just gonna be an overlay. And it has an opacity, and we can change it like that. Uh, or you can completely get rid of it. But I kinda like it, it looks cool. Another change has been to the media and text block. So the media and text block allows you to have like a featured image of some kind. Like let's say this one. And then you can write some snazzy text alongside it. What's new is that now you can make this uh, media file actually do something. It can link to something. So you will go up here, you'll see a link, and you'll see it gives you a couple of options. You can either link it to the media file itself. So when someone clicks it, they'll see the full image. You can go and change it to the attachment page. And so you might not know this, but every single file that you upload has its own attachment page in WordPress and will show the picture and you can configure it to show extra details, things like that. So if you wanted to, you could link it there or you could link it to another page in your site like the sample page or you could just insert your own custom URL. And so now when we update this, 
Where did it go? No, oh, it's not working. That's not good. Theoretically, this should work. Um, let's see. Link. Oh, did I not hit enter? There we go. Update. Refresh. And yep, yeah, there we go. So now if I click on this, I'm taking over to Google. Let's see, what else do we have? A uh, new thing is the edit and navigation modes. So I'm gonna go over to the block unit test. And this is a collection of a huge number of WordPress blocks and how they can be organized in different sections that is uh, made by a guy named Rich Tabor. And one of the things that we have now is something called a distinct edit mode and select mode. So by default, you're in edit mode but you can change over to select mode by going up to this toolbar here and clicking select. And then when you click on a block, you're not automatically editing the block. So you can safely click around and not worry about getting like a text editor to appear. If you then want to edit it, you just click again and then you're in edit mode. If you're a keyboard user, you can click the escape key at this point and you'll go back into selection mode and when you're in selection mode as well, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to easily navigate between all the blocks. And you're not worried about if you're in edit mode, for instance, you'd be moving your key cursor around inside of the text, but you're not doing that anymore. You're just navigating between blocks. So that is the edit and selection modes or edit and navigation modes, excuse me. Uh, we're getting close to the end, but a new uh, package has been created by the Gutenberg team called Create Block. And what this lets you do is run something really simple um, like this. So you can say npm init at WordPress slash block. And what that'll do is if you want to get into block development or creating your own blocks, this will automatically create everything that you need at the command line in one, one single command. Uh, to set everything up for you. So you can go through everything and you get the blocks ready to go and you can start editing and it figures out building for you and the baseline code and all that kind of stuff like that. Uh, and it handles everything. Let's see if there's anything else that I missed. Uh, no, I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, there are some, I think, some other random changes here. I think this is somewhat new. There are some enhancements to tables and things like that. Um, but as far as I know, uh, those are the major changes to the block editor in WordPress 5.4. Uh, like I said, I would highly encourage you to check out uh, the beta testing plugin, please. This is a pretty stable release at this point, uh, but please do create a staging site for it and test. And what you can then do is if you go over to wordpress.org, we go into support forums, and then you can go over to the alpha slash beta slash RC forum. And this is uh, populated all by people who have been testing WordPress 5.4 over the past couple of weeks. And this stuff is awesome. If you've ever had your site break uh, or not work anymore after upgrading WordPress, uh, the best thing that you can do is try doing that before WordPress 5.4 comes out. And if you figure out, if you run into an issue, you can report it here. You can create an account uh, for WordPress.org and just open up a new form reply. And someone will get in there and reply back to you and see, oh, is this actually a bug with WordPress? And if so, maybe it can get fixed in time uh, so you don't have to run into it on your live website. Um, but yeah, so that is a snapshot overview of all the changes that have happened in WordPress 5.4. Uh, so at this point, if anyone has any questions specific to WordPress 5.4, or when we've kind of done these talks for the past couple of uh, times, I guess this is the third time we're doing this. Um, if you have general Gutenberg uh, questions, I will be happy to try and answer those as well. Is this an issue? When you bring focus to a block, the drag and drop handles on the left side are gone. So I think that's just because I'm using the top uh top toolbar mode so they're up here now so if we go into let's find a block that we can move 
if we wanted to move this block down, uh, they're just up here because I'm using the top toolbar mode, bud. Uh, but if I disable that, they're back here. Good eye, though. Awesome. We have a couple of other questions, too. Uh, so Sam Bell asks, um, this, the, I don't know if you were clear on this, but the WordPress part of the social sharing uh, block could actually be turned, can that be turned off as well? Didn't? Yeah, so you can, these are, they all act the same. Uh, you can just delete it, the URL and then they're gone. Um, but if you're a WordPress person, uh, you might not know this, there is a profiles.wordpress.org slash, let's do mine. And uh, you can see a kind of snapshot of what that person does with WordPress. Um, so if you have a WordPress account, uh, you have a profile on this and you can log in, you can edit it and do a lot of that. Um, and I think that's mainly what that social icon is meant for, to link to your WordPress profile. But yeah, you can get rid of them. Awesome. Um, also, the social sharing, I'm, I'm assuming it's not, but uh, Sam also asked, is there a way to get those automatically on each uh, blog post? No, there isn't, um, which is kind of disappointing, but it's disappointing because we haven't gone into the next phase of Gutenberg yet, which is full site editing. So the social icons block here, I'd say it, it's of interesting utility at the moment. I've used it on a client site, like on the home page um, and in a couple of key pages, like you put on the contact page and it works for that. But when we get to full site editing, which is where you use Gutenberg to edit the whole look of your site, you'd be able to use the social links icon block to put something at the end of your single page template and it would be inserted everywhere. We're not there yet, but that is the main goal for Gutenberg uh, for 2020 and probably shipping in early 2021. Awesome. Um, the button block, is there a way to generate those URLs dynamically or everything is just static? So these are uh, regular uh, WordPress blocks. So if we go into the code editor, uh, let's go into the code editor actually for that specific block. So these are just regular uh, blocks. They're not uh, server-side rendered blocks. So you could theoretically uh, with a filter on render block, you would be able to say, okay, let's extract out uh, the href for this block if we wanted to and apply it. But there isn't a uh, streamlined way of doing that. Um, so if you wanted to like have the same set on every single page, what I would recommend doing is converting this to a reusable block. So if we go back to edit visually, ooh, that might be a bug to report. Uh, let's resolve. Hmm. Let's see if this will work. Running into bugs in real time. Let's just refresh the page and lose all that stuff. But yeah, so let's say you have a list of links that you want to include at the bottom of like every uh, post for some sort of like call to action type thing. Um, if we got rid of this button. Navigation is still super annoying. <laughs> let's see if I can get that. Am I on that? That's not clearing out. Let's edit this at code, which is kind of like my resort for everything to get rid of that button. Let's try to get that. Gutenberg is still a little bit buggy. <laughs> that didn't work at all. But OK, so let's uh, create a new one. Uh, buttons. And let's create uh, view free resource, sign up, something like that. Uh, what we can do is we can convert this thing to a reusable block. So we go up into buttons. And then we say add to reusable blocks. And so we could say maybe my product promos and then hit save. 
And so now let's say I want to edit, let's update actually. Let's say I'm creating a new blog post about this product and I want to automatically include those. I can use that reusable block. So let's go here. I'm going to have to add it. Scroll down to reusable blocks and we'll see my product promos. And then this has been included. And what's really cool about reusable blocks is that if you update them once, they update everywhere. So let's say I want to change this resource to be something else. I can, whoops, uh, where do I have to go? I have to go into the reusable blocks thing. Manage all reusable blocks, go to my product promos. And I could say, sign up now. And when I update this, it will have updated itself for all of the posts. There we go. So if the reason that you're wanting to apply links programmatically is because you're worried about creating a link in one spot and then having to update it across like 800 different blog posts or pages when a link changes, uh, then you can use reusable blocks to solve that problem. If you want to do it for another reason, I don't have a good solution for you at the moment. Awesome. I think, uh, what was it, filter block or render block? That was there is a render block filter. And what you could do, and I've done stuff like this, though I don't know if I'd recommend it, is you can take that and you can pump it into, uh, what's it called, a DOM document and do some weird editing like that. And it, it, it works, but... I, I would say you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, Dominique is asking, and this is more general question, good question, I guess. Uh, what's the easiest way to find uh, the direct link for the page or blog post that they created? Sure. So if you're in the editor, you can go over, you might be stuck in a block. So in which case you should switch over to the document tab up here. And then you'll see the permalink section. It might be closed. Um, you can open it and you'll see it'll give you a link to view your post and it'll have the full link for you. You can also, if you want something more convenient to use while you're editing, you can click preview. Um, if you're not in full screen mode, you can click view post in your menu bar. Uh, those are, I'd say, the three main ways that you can grab the current post, the URL for the current post you're editing. Awesome. Um, Nelson asked, are there... Uh, an are there any additional um, admin HTML layout improvements? Any semantic classes? Anything added? So styling, I guess styling the admin would be easier. Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, I wouldn't. There are people who style the admin, and you can, um, but it's really difficult, and it isn't really meant to be styled in that way. You can apply things like color schemes, which it is kind of meant for. Um, so like you can change things like this, but if you want to do heavy customization to the admin, I personally wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it'll actually get any easier in the future um, as well. One of the things with Gutenberg that you might've run into if you were used to doing this before is that a lot of these things don't have very specific CSS classes so that you can totally override the display of things. And so I think as more and more parts of the WordPress admin are built in uh, the quote unquote new way that being able to style the admin completely will get more and more difficult. Uh, what will change though, is that the rest API uh, will get more and more powerful. So you could build an entirely custom admin. Um, but yeah, I would not recommend trying to heavily stylize the admin in general. And I don't think it's, it definitely hasn't gotten any easier in 5.4 and I don't think it'll get any easier in the future. Okay, good. Uh, Bud said you did a great job as usual. And he's asking you questions. <laughs> Can you show uh, us again the replace feature and also where on .org is the alpha beta forum? Yeah, so the alpha beta forum, you want to go to wordpress.org. You're going to go up to support and then go to forums. And then if you scroll down, it's the last one, the alpha slash beta slash RC forum. Um, and also post it in the uh, chat. Uh, for the first question, 
Uh, let's go into WordPress 5.4. Uh, you're going to go and click on the image, and then you're going to look for something that says replace. Uh, and so then we hit replace. You can either upload an image directly or open the media library, and then you can choose the image that you want to replace it. And that'll work for pretty much everything. So like if I put in an image block and choose something from the media library, uh, I do the exact same thing. I go up to replace. And I open the media library, and I can pick the new image that I want. Um, that the kind of goal for this was that a lot of different blocks had different uh, ways to do things, um, and this is essentially the point is to uh, combine. I don't know what you mean by that by saying you can just click on the image to replace. Like if you just click on the image, you'll get into the kind of like edit mode, um, and you'll have the block, and you can like do your adjustments and things like this. Um, but you need to go up uh, and hit replace uh, to do that. Um, there used to be, like for instance, some of these. There used to be like a individual like pencil that you could click in the toolbar, and that would be a one-click thing. Uh, but that's not there anymore. It's all unified under uh, the replace menu. Uh, you see, uh, D. Curtis is asking, does it accept SVG files? I don't believe it does for default. By default. No, so SVG is interesting. Uh, there is a core track ticket about it. Um, but essentially, SVGs really are arbitrary JavaScript. Um, and so it's not an image like other images. It's actually code. And so what's difficult is that WordPress lets uh, anyone who can write posts uh, upload files. Um, and what you don't want, essentially, WordPress has this concept of like uh, who can write completely, can include JavaScript, let's say, in a post. And by default, only administrators can do that. Um, but if you let people upload SVGs, they would be able to run arbitrary HTML, which would kind of break the security model uh, for the WordPress editor. So there are, I believe, plugins that will let you do that. Um, but I would say, one, be extraordinarily careful. If you are going to do that, make sure you only have people who are highly, highly trusted um, editing your site. And I think also when you get to like things that are kind of like this, sometimes they'll say, oh, well, I trust all the authors on my site, which you probably do because you're letting them write content. But the question isn't so much whether you completely trust the author, but whether you completely trust that the author is 100% perfect with their own security. So if you... Um, if they can be tricked to uploading a malicious SVG, then it's not so much that your author was out to get you, but that they're human and they made a mistake. Um, so I would be highly, highly cautious about letting anyone uh, create SVGs. Bud's saying in the chat that Coblox has an SVG block. There are, one of the things that you'll see in that track ticket if you look at it, is some ways to sanitize SVGs. And there are some different ways to do it, but they're kind of, uh, the last time I checked, there's still not a perfect way to do that on the PHP side of things. So uh, I'd just be careful, in other words. I think that's a really good point. I mean, you, it's really easy to find a website that has uh, an SVG you want, copy it and paste it, in, you know, and upload it. Yeah. Um, and you never, you know, you don't know where it's coming from, but you can't trust it. You know, you're going to have problems. It's a good point. Uh, do you want to, you have time for some more questions? I have all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Dominique's asking, you can see in the chat, um, about plugins and are there tools on how to figure out what plugin is broken and why it may have broken? Well, that's a big question. Um, WP, so, the bug lights, or? yeah, so I would, there's a couple of different things. Um, what was added in WordPress 5.3 or is it 5.2? is uh, something called Site Health. Um, and Site Health was born out of a plugin called uh, Site Health, uh, but also Site Health and Troubleshooting. Let's find it. I think it's in Featured. Yeah, Health Check and Troubleshooting. So if you install this plugin, um, it'll add some things uh, beyond the health checks that are included in Core. So if we go into site health, I think it's from here. Yeah. 
So you'll see a new tab called troubleshooting, and then you can enable troubleshooting. And so what this does is this uh, opens you into a form of WordPress where you can essentially toggle what plugins are available. Uh, for some reason, this is not loading for me, which is weird. Um, but you can toggle what plugins are available uh, automatically, um, but have it not affect the front of your website. So like if someone else visited my demo site, um, OK, here we go. I think this is just, oh, it's not working on the dashboard maybe. But yeah, so I could say, let's say, right now when you enter in trouble mode, sorry, this is not the point of the talk, so I'm not prepared for it. But this is the plugin that I would recommend for it. Uh, what I'll do is right now I'm in troubleshooting mode and only my browser is in troubleshooting mode. Um, and so what that means is that if someone else visits my website, like let's say I deactivated uh, my Instagram widget or something like that, because uh, I would suspect that it was having a problem. If someone visited my website right now, they would still see the Instagram widget, which is really cool. So what this is just doing is I can now selectively enable and disable plugins. And all of these changes that I'm making are only happening for me. Um, so like I said, in my day job, I work for iTheme security. Um, and so like one of the first steps for a lot of times when we get support questions is like, hey, how do we, uh, we're experiencing this error. We haven't seen that error happen before. So one of the first things we recommend is to disable all your plugins. Oftentimes that's something that isn't easy for someone to do. If their site is a live site, they don't have a development environment or something like that. But what you can do is you can use troubleshooting mode and when you enter in troubleshooting mode, all of them will get to dis all of them will get disabled, um, and then you can enable them selectively and see oh at what point does it cause a problem. Um, so that's what I recommend. As to whether there's a plugin that'll do the troubleshooting all by itself, no. Um, essentially, you would have to define what the success condition is, um, and there are yeah it, the, uh, if you've watched a talk. Um, that has been given a couple of times about acceptance testing in WordPress. Um, there are some caveats to that, like it could be possible, um, but I would say there's not a user-friendly way. There's a way if you are a developer and you want to spend some time with it, where you could write some tests and then you could have a script that'll automatically like toggle plugins and do all of this jazz. Um, but it is not something that I would say uh, is any easier for the end user. It'd be substantially more complicated. My recommendation would yeah would be to use troubleshooting mode in the health check plugin.